Hey everybody, welcome back to All the Math. That's all the math you need for computer science. This is episode three of volume one, and in this lesson we're going to build upon the notion of sets that we talked about in episode two to define a new kind of mathematical construct called a relation. Now the definition of a relation packs a lot into a few words, and when I give it to you, if you fully understand the definition, you almost can figure out everything else I'm going to talk about in this entire unit because it all stems from the definition. But you've got to really unpack it and think carefully about it. Here's the definition. A relation is, get this, a subset of the Cartesian product. All right? A relation between sets A and B, say, is a subset of of A cross B, a subset of the Cartesian product between A and B. So let's unpack that and try to remember what all this stuff means. So you will recall uh, that if I have two sets, we'll call them A and B. And I'll just put some elements in here just for fun. You will recall that A cross B is this funny thing it does not consist of numbers in this case, it consists of ordered pairs of numbers. And you'll recall that the Cartesian product has a set of ordered pairs. Each ordered pair is a combination from one of the elements from the left hand side and one of the elements from the right hand side. So in this case I have 1, 3, I have 1, 5, I have 4, 3, and I have 4, 5. Those are the four ordered pairs in the Cartesian product A cross B. Now, a relation is, as I said, a subset of the Cartesian product. So let's think through this. What are some subsets of the Cartesian product? Well, one of them is 1, 3, and 4, 5. That's a subset of the Cartesian product. That is a subset of A cross B. And we could define this as a relation. We could say, let's call this relation R1. Let's find another relation here. Let's find one called R2. R2, where are you? Let's say that's 1, 5, 4, 3, and 4, 5. That is another subset of the Cartesian product. What's another one? Let's make an R3. Let's say that is just 4, 3. That too is a relation on A and B because it's a subset of the Cartesian product. Let's take another one, R4. Let's set that equal to the empty set. Because remember, the empty set is a subset of every set. Therefore, the empty set is a subset of the Cartesian product. That too is a valid relation. Let's take the other extreme. Let's set R5 equal to the whole enchilada A cross B. I could have written out <clears throat> all the ordered pairs like I did here, but we could also just more compactly say R5 equals A cross B. That too is a relation. So any subset of the Cartesian product is a relation. Now, that may not seem like it is useful right now, but it will become into play as very useful uh, in a few minutes when we talk about uh, the meaning of relations and what we're really trying to express via them. Let me give you just a little bit of notation here. Um, there are two ways of expressing that a particular ordered pair is in a relation, and that's one of the things we want to do a lot, is express that, ah, yes, the ordered pair 1, 3 is in fact in R1. So one way to do that is to just do this. Right? That is expressing the fact that R1 does in fact have 1 comma 3 in it. And of course we could say 1 comma 3 is not an element of R2 because that was missing from that relation. So that's notation that we're used to. Now there's another bit of notation that uh, mathematicians often use and we will too. And that's to say 1 R1 3. It's kind of a funny thing. That's actually like a sentence. That's to say one is R1 related to three. And all that means is the same thing as this. It's just another way of writing it. So over here we could say one R2 not three. So by putting a slash through it, just like we put a slash through the element of sign here, it indicates that that particular ordered pair is not in the relation. Okay? So 
everything else we talk about in this lesson is going to stem from this definition. And you just got to think through every time you have a relation on two sets, what you have is a bunch of ordered pairs where the first element is from the left hand side and the second element is from the right hand side. And you may or may not have all of them. Usually you don't. It's, it's the exception rather than the rule that you would have the entire Cartesian product as we had down here with R5. But any subset of the, of the Cartesian product counts as a relation. Now, let me mention that just as with sets, we can define relations either extensionally or intentionally. And in all the examples I gave on the previous slide, I was defining them extensionally. I was saying something like, you know, R6 is perhaps, you know, 4 comma 3 and 4 comma 5. So that's an extensional definition. Now, we can do it intentionally as well. What if we said R7 is the set of ordered pairs such that the left-hand side is greater than the right-hand side? That is an intentional definition. I haven't spelled out what the different ordered pairs are, but I'm giving you a rule to determine what they are, and I'm specifying that any time the left element is greater than the right element, then that ordered pair will, in fact, be in R7. And if you look at the data that we have here, if I spelled it out extensionally, that would correspond to this. R7 would simply be the ordered pair 4, 3, because that is the only example of an element from A on the left and an element from B on the right where A is, in fact, left in B. But this is simply showing you that I don't have to define it like that. I could have defined it like that and simply given you the extensional definition as well. All right. Now, an interesting thing to think about is how many different relations there can be between two sets. So suppose we have our sets A and B that we just defined. We have 1, 4, and 3, 5 as our two relations. What are, or, I'm sorry, as our two sets, what are the different possible relations we could have? How many are there? And if you think that through, it comes down to the same sort of pattern that I alluded to at some point in episode two. And this is a pattern that comes up a lot in discrete math, so make sure you kind of get this pattern. We have a bunch of ordered pairs, each of which could be or could not be included in a particular relation. So if I want to build a relation on A cross B, basically I take every one of the ordered pairs, an element from A and an element from B, and I either include it or I exclude it. And what that boils down to is I have two choices for each ordered pair. I can either include or not include the pair 1, 4. I can either include or not include the pair 3, uh, 1 comma 3, 1 comma 5, I'm, I'm forgetting what the, the elements are, but the bottom line is that for every single pair of those elements, I can either include it or exclude it. And what that means is that I have two choices for the first one, and then independently of whether or not I choose to include that ordered pair, I can either include or exclude the second one, and then regardless of what I choose for that ordered pair, I can either include or exclude the third one, and regardless of what I choose for that ordered pair, I can either include or exclude the fourth one. And what that boils down to is 16 different relations for those. And that's because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. Seems like a lot, but it really turns out to be true. Here's what the general formula is. Suppose I have A and B as my two sets. Now, what is the cardinality of A cross B? We learned last time that that is the cardinality of A times the cardinality of B, right? And in our example before, A had two things in it, I forget what they are. B had two other things in it, I forget what they are. But those two elements each had two sets. Therefore, the Cartesian product, A cross B, had four ordered pairs in it. So, how many different relations can I have? How many possible different relations between A and B are there? There's going to be 2 to the cardinality of A times cardinality of B. And that's because we have the cardinality of A times the cardinality of B, different ordered pairs, each of which can be excluded or excluded. And what that boils down to is 2 to the that many possible different relations. And you might, do, just as an exercise, list them all out. 
And basically what you'd do is you'd say, well, let's include just the first one. Let's include the first one and the second one. Let's include the first one and the third one. Let's include the first one and the second one and the third one. And you'll discover if you go through all of them, that there will be 16 of them. Uh, one of them is the empty set. One of them is the entire Cartesian product. All the rest come into something in between. Okay, a couple more little definitions here, and then we'll go to the next segment and do some examples. But uh, here's some, some just kind of weird terms. So here's one. There's something called an endo relation. That's a really nerdy sounding term. But an endo relation simply means a relation where both the left hand side and the right hand side are the same set. Okay, so it's a relation from a set onto itself. So if I have A is 1, comma 4, then I could have an endo relation. Let's call it R8, I think we're up to. We could say that is a subset of the Cartesian product A cross A. So maybe we could say that R8 has in it the ordered pair 1, comma 1, and the ordered pair 1, comma 4, and the ordered pair 4, comma 1. Right? That is a subset of A cross A. And I can make another relation. Maybe I call it R9. That's also going to be defined on A cross A. And maybe that one's the empty set. I can always have that one, right? Maybe I have uh, R10, and that's going to be the ordered pair, or excuse me, the relation 4, comma 4, and 4, comma 1, right? These are all examples of endo relations, and that's just a nutty name for any relation where the left-hand set and the right-hand set are actually the same set. All right, and the last thing for this segment is that just like with sets, we can have infinite or finite relations. So the ones we've looked at before have been finite. Again, finite just means it has a finite number of ordered pairs in it. So when I said, you know, that R10 was equal to 4 comma 4 and 4 comma 1 or whatever I said, that was obviously a finite relation because there's a finite number of ordered pairs in it. Now, you might say, how could we have an infinite uh, relation because we can't possibly list them all. Well, sure, but it's the same thing with sets, right? You can't list all of the elements of an infinite set either. That doesn't mean there can't be infinite sets. And here's something we could say. Let me give you an example of an infinite relation here. Let's make a relation, uh, and I'm going to define it intentionally as you have to with infinite ones, right? You can't possibly list an infinite relation extensionally any more than you could list an infinite set extensionally because we don't have infinite paper and infinite time, right? So I'm going to define a relation. Now I could call it R11, uh, but instead I'm going to call it, and this is what we're often going to do, we're going to give it a name. I'm going to call it greater than, and I'm going to use camel case here. I'm going to capitalize the T and capitalize the G. I often do that just so I can kind of have it all as one word with no spaces, and yet it's a little bit legible because I've actually capitalized each succeeding word. I'm going to call it greater than, and I'm going to say, just like we said before with that intentional set, that it is the set of all elements where the first element is greater than the second element. But you know what? Instead of making this on A cross B, I'm going to make this a subset of Z cross Z. What do you think of them apples? Remember that Z here is another way of writing the set of all integers. So clearly Z is an infinite set and Z here is an infinite set. So we've got an infinite set cross an infinite set which obviously gives us an infinite Cartesian product and we have got a subset of that which is also infinite and what is the extension of that? Well, I can't begin to write it, um, but if I want to say what R11, or maybe we want to call it greater than, if I wanted to partially give the extension here, I would say that somewhere in there, I've got 5 and 2. That's an ordered pair in greater than, because 5 is an integer which is greater than 2. Also somewhere in here, I have 3 and negative 2, because 3 is clearly a number that's greater than negative 2. Also somewhere in here, I have 114,369,215, comma, 409. That is an element in this uh, relation because 114 million blah, blah, blah is clearly bigger than 409, right? And there's infinitely many ones that I could write. But the only purpose of giving this example is to show that a relation can certainly be infinite. You're going to have to define it intentionally if it's infinite because there's no way to actually list all the explicit pairs. But there's certainly nothing wrong with having a relation which has infinitely many members.